Today we've got two of the baddest heavy duty trucks that you can buy. Over here we have the F350 Lariat with Ford's new Tremor package and over here we have the Ram 2500 Power Wagon. The point of this video is not to convince you which one is better because they both cater to different people. I'm just going to show you exactly what you get with each one and they're both pretty much loaded and pretty similar in price but one's a little more expensive than the other so keep that in mind on which one's a better value. I'll tell you the price at the end of the video. If you want to skip around from part to part, I've got timestamps in the description below so you can go to whatever part of the video you want. Let's get started. Now starting under the hood with the powertrains, this is where things get a little bit interesting and differ between the two trucks. So over on the Ram, you've got a port injected 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that is a push rod engine. It's going to give you 410 horsepower, 429 pound feet of torque that comes out at 4000 RPM. It's also paired with an 8 speed automatic. Over on the Ford, you get the brand new port injected 7.3 liter gas V8. That's a push rod engine as well with 430 horsepower, 475 pound feet of torque. Still comes out at 4,000 RPM paired with a 10 speed automatic. Now one big differentiating factor is that on the Ford, you can actually get their 6.7 liter power stroke diesel. Whereas on the power wagon, you cannot get the Cummins diesel. So if you want a diesel, the Ford is your option, even though both of these engines are quite powerful. Now one of the separation factors between the two trucks is going to be its towing. This Super Duty can still actually tow 15,000 pounds conventionally, whereas the Power Wagon can tow 10,520 pounds. And if you give yourself the diesel and a fifth wheel option on here, you can go over 21,000 pounds with the Ford. So towing is definitely on the Ford side. Both of these engines sound really good. I'll give you some exhaust clips in a little bit. Now let's take a look at some of the exterior details, both the aesthetics as well as the functional off-road features that you get with each one. So obviously they both get LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. Their headlights on both of them, I believe, look really cool. They both kind of have a big menacing front end as well. The Super Duty has a couple of tow hooks. It can be fitted with a winch, but we do not have that. And you also get LED fog lights and a really good approach angle. Over on the Ram, the front end even goes a little bit further. You've got a couple of big uh, tow hooks as well. You've got a different kind of bigger, bolder grill, I guess you could say. And then you've got a 10,000 pound winch, which comes standard on the truck. So that could be really handy if, you've ever, if you get stuck off-road. You also get LED fog lights like the Ford, but you've got powder coated bumpers. But the thing about this is the approach angle is a little bit less than the Tremor. And then with the Tremor, the front axle is actually a limited slip and not a locker, which is one thing that it falls behind on the Ram. You get 18 inch matte finish wheels with 35 inch tires and they are knobby tires. Those are actually the largest tires fitted to a heavy duty truck. It's got some high and tight off-road running boards and dimensionally it's 250 inches long. So it is a little bit longer than the power wagon. It's definitely a big truck. It's got 10.8 inches of ground clearance at the axle and 15.4 inches of running clearance altogether, which is best compared to these two vehicles. And it can forward up to 33 inches of water. Skid plates will cover the transfer case and the fuel tank. The Tremor suspension is pretty advanced with progressive rate springs for heavy duty towing, but still great body control when going off road and a special stabilizer bar in the back as well. And it does really well at low speeds for soft damping. The rear end has a locking differential that can be electronically locked on the fly and the departure angle unfortunately is a little bit worse than it is on the power wagon as opposed to where the front end was a little bit better than the power wagon. Now when you take a look at the Ram, this is where things start to, to change a little bit. You've got a locking front axle and a disconnecting front sway bar which will allow massive front wheel articulation that can be so helpful with traction going off road. You also can get a two-tone color experience, like we have the blue and the black here, and a little bit larger fender flares as opposed to the Tremor. You'll get 17-inch wheels with 33-inch tires instead of the 35s on the Tremor. And then the tube steps on the side are optional. You certainly don't have to get those, but they do hang a little bit lower than they do on the Tremor. The Ram is 239 inches long, so it is shorter and probably more nimble than the Tremor is. You get the same skid plates on the fuel tank and the transfer case, and the rear axle on this Ram is also locking, just like the front is. You can control those on the inside, and you'll get Bilstein gas charge shocks, 
14.2 inches of running clearance as opposed to the 15 on the Tremor. So a little bit less overall clearance and 30 inches of water fording, which is three inches less than the Tremor. In the back of the Ram, you get another powder coated bumper, but you actually have improved departure angle over the Tremor. Now, when you look at the truck beds, this is where they differ quite a bit as well. Some good and bad on both of them. So both of them will actually give you, you can do this with the key fob, but to where you can open up the tailgate just like that and they're both soft damping. As far as getting into the bed, Ram gives you this step that you can pull out from the bumper, whereas Ford gives you the tailgate step that pops out and drops down. One thing to note about Ford is that they actually give you a towing light. This light shines down right about to where the hitch is to help you with some night hookups that the Ram doesn't have. And when you look at the bed of the Ford, you get a six and three quarter foot box. You've got the optional spray in bed liner. You have a couple of fixed tie down hooks as well as the movable tie down hooks and LED box lighting for three different LED lights to light this whole thing up. It can give you a cab mounted bed camera, but this one does not have it. And then when you move over to the Ram, you get a six foot four inch box. It still has the optional spray in bed liner as well, as well as the same four fixed tie downs, but you've got Ram's movable tie downs that can move the whole length of the bed. One big differentiating factor is that you've got the Ram box storage areas on each side of the box. So that completely changes the shape of the box, but gives you some lockable storage area. You also get a 115 volt plug-in with the Ram where you don't get a plug-in with the Super Duty. And Ram also gives us on this particular truck a cab mounted camera so you can keep an eye on your cargo all the time. And then when we get to payload, that's where the Super Duty again kind of separates itself. You can put about 4,200 pounds in the back of this one, whereas payload on the Power Wagon is a little under 1,600 pounds. So that's a pretty big difference. You've got different shock setups, you've got different off-road type setups. So that's kind of a big deal. Now taking a quick look at the front seats, the features and the comfort, the Ford can give you an entry exit system to where the steering wheel and the seat will automatically move to your memory settings. These are leather wrapped seats that are 10 way power adjustable, including lumbar support. They're heated and ventilated with the memory settings and even power adjustable pedals. Ours is outfitted with the bucket seats, but you can have the bench seat with the folding armrest in the middle. I've been able to spend a lot of time in these F-Series seats and I've been really comfortable in here. I've honestly got zero complaints at all about them. Now as you hop into the Ram, you're going to get a leather bench seat with a folding armrest, which is definitely not what you normally see in trucks anymore. You do get the easy entrance and exit system where the seat will move, but the steering wheel does not move. The steering wheel is actually only a manual tilt option and no telescoping option at all. These seats are eight-way power adjustable with two-way lumbar support. They're heated, ventilated, and have memory settings, and they're still fairly comfortable. They've got nice plushness to them, and in my week of driving, I've been comfortable. I am filming this a little bit later, uh, just so I can talk on the comfort. The pedals are also power adjustable, just like they are in the Tremor. The steering wheel on ours is actually heated, though, which is a nice touch. And space-wise, this still feels really spacious, probably even more so because there's no center console right here. So your knee kind of has a little more sideways space and everything is just nice and roomy. Now, I won't spend a lot of time looking at the interior of these vehicles. Those are kind of different flavors for different people. But in the Ram, you definitely have some nice materials in here. Uh, you get a really large 12 inch screen right in the middle where a lot of your functions and features are touchscreen, but you've got easily accessible trailer brake controllers, the locking buttons for your front and rear axle, your off-road control is actually on the floor as opposed to the Ford, and you get a lot of charging ports in here, more than you do with the F-Series truck. And overall, it's very functional. You've got good storage area, you've got good cup holders, it is comfortable to be in, and there's a lot of accessible information pretty much all around you. You still get towing mirrors, although they do not extend outward like they do in the F-Series truck. The Ram also gives you a 360 degree camera, a little bit more advanced than you see on the F-Series truck. Now when you look at the interior of the Tremor, one thing right off the bat that I like is that Ford includes the touchpad on the side of the door, something that you don't always see. Uh, Ford also gives you power scoping mirrors for its towing mirrors so you can extend the mirrors and they automatically fold when you turn the vehicle off. The Ram can power fold though. You don't have as large of a main screen. You've got an eight inch screen that still gives you a fair amount of information. All your off-road controls are still easily accessible and close to the driver so there's no fuss with that. 
not as many charging ports as you get in the Ram and kind of a different layout overall with storage because we have a console instead of the flip up middle seat. Although the Ram gives you a ton of information on that huge 12 inch screen in the middle, the Ford gives you a lot of nice, easily accessible information on its information display in the gauge cluster, which I like that more than the Ram, but the Ram's center screen is pretty cool. There's still a lot of storage around, and one feature that you get is the twin panel moonroof up above that you won't find in the power wagon. Now, when you take a look at the back seat of the Ford, it's still a very spacious area with the crew cab. You've got a 60-40 split folding seat area with a lockable under seat storage as well. And it's a pretty nice flat load floor when you have the seats folded up without even having to do anything. You also get a couple of charging ports, a couple of AC vents, 110 volt power outlet and 12 volt power outlet as well. Heated seats are optional, but we do not have them. The Ram's back seat is also really nice and spacious. 60-40 split folding seats again. The floor is not flat like the F-150, but you can fold down parts under the seat to make the actual floor and loading area really flat. It's a little bit more cumbersome to get the under access or the under seat storage access, but you still have that nice flat area. You've got AC vents, charging ports. You actually have heated seats in this vehicle, 115 volt power outlet as well, and a couple charging ports. So overall, both back seat areas can be very useful for hauling people or cargo. So as we get behind the wheel of the Tremor, this is going to be very short and concise. I have more detailed driving portions uh, in each respective video, but just a couple quick comparisons. Now, I've driven this Tremor for a week now, and I just got the power wagon, so I've had very limited time with it. So as I'm driving the Tremor, I can't make comparisons to the power wagon, but right after this, I'll have the power wagon and make a few comparisons. But right off the bat, let's, let's listen to that V8. This sounds good. 7.3 liters of gas V8 under the hood. You just gotta love that. And this is paired with that 10 speed transmission. And for the most part, it's been really responsive. Now, with other Ford products on the 10 speed, I've had some mixed feelings about it, and I have the same with this. I think these Super Duty trucks are paired pretty well with it. I feel like the diesel did better in terms of kind of going through its gears quickly and not being quite as jerky, but stop and go traffic, slowing down, speeding up a little more consistently, the transmission gets a little more annoying in this Ford truck. But aside from that, the steering feel, this has adaptive steering, just like the Power Wagon, which this is an option to basically help change the weight of the steering depending on your speed and and it does a pretty good job as far as handling you feel confident enough in this truck there's there is certainly you know you got a tall ride height which is good and that's not what this is about with handling but um you know just off of very limited experience i think at lower speeds the power wagon maybe feels a little easier to maneuver around but the power wagon is also a shorter vehicle dimensionally so that could make a difference this does not have a leather steering wheel in our particular truck and it feels a little sticky, a little gummy, so not my favorite with that, but otherwise, I mean, highway driving, you feel planted, you feel like it's easy to control the truck and even slow speeds is still not too bad, so can't really complain about that. The ride comfort in here, it feels like a heavy duty truck. I mean, it's built to tow a crap ton and you've got some really big, you got really big suspension components, it is stiff, uh, so it does feel like a stiff ride and it's kind of jittery and bouncy When you compare it to other vehicles, but when you're looking at trucks heavy-duty trucks, especially ones from Generations ago this feels so much better. Let's listen to that again. Gosh dang that 
sounds good. Now, like I said, I haven't really driven the power wagon hardly at all yet, but I know statistically, specification wise, this has more power and it is faster, if that matters to you. Um, it's a bigger engine, it's probably gonna be thirstier too, uh, but still, very capable. Torque range, torque actually comes out pretty early. You can get 400 pound-feet of torque Pretty low in the RPM band, but it peaks at 4,000. So Ford did a good job of giving you power throughout that range, which is nice. Now, if you want driver assist features, things like that, this can give you a lane keeping system. You can option up to get the adaptive cruise control. The Power Wagon has both of those um, on its spec right now. So as priced right here, we don't have the adaptive cruise control. And overall, noise, vibration, and harshness, of course, you can kind of hear some of that tire noise, which is expected, but it's still a quiet vehicle. You've got laminated glass, uh, quiet on the roads, rough surfaces, and on highway roads, you know, at higher speeds, so can't complain about that. And in terms of daily driving, I've really enjoyed it. I love the ride height. I love how easy it still is to drive around a big truck. Everything is in a good place. Uh, I don't have any complaints with that. Um, one thing is that I've gotten used to the console, you know, the center console. Uh, I like how much space and storage there is as opposed to maybe the lift up armrest. That's all I used to have in the last two trucks that I owned was a flip up armrest, but I think I'd go with the center console now. But let's go ahead and shift over and drive that power wagon. All right, now we have hopped over into the power wagon and I'm filming this quite a bit after I filmed with the Tremor because um, I, did, I only had a very limited time with the power wagon at that point, but now I've been driving this for almost a week. And let me just give you a sound of that V8 here. It sounds really good. Both of them sound really good. Obviously, I think you can tell that the Tremor has a bigger engine, but I think you can hear more of the V8 sound and the Hemis just sound fantastic. So really no complaints with that. One big difference between, well not even a big difference, but one difference between this Power Wagon and that Tremor is the steering feel. They both have steering that does good at low speeds to where it's easy to maneuver, easy to off-road. In fact, the Ram has probably a lighter weighted steering at low speeds to where off-roading that can be really helpful to quickly turn your wheels, even parking in a spot. But at high speeds, the Ford is better because it's a little more stable feeling, in my opinion at least, the Ram has a sloppier steering feel. So just something to uh, consider, something to think about. Both of them are good in different ways. Um, overall ride comfort is another big difference. So the, the Super Duty, obviously I said, you know, it's got the payload capacity, it can tow a lot more, but the Ram is a softer riding vehicle. Obviously it doesn't have the towing and payload, but it's softer. I mean, it's a comfortable ride. It's smoother ride. Uh, whether you're off-road or on-road, you've got a softer riding experience. So, depends what, what matters to you. If you're used to driving a heavy-duty truck, the Tremor probably won't bother you. But this feels much softer than most heavy-duty trucks. Now the brakes on here, I don't remember if I even touched on the brakes on the Tremor, but brakes are responsive on here. More responsive than I was expecting, so. That's really welcome, that's nice. They felt good going off-road too. And acceleration again. Definitely gotta love that sound. Now, it sounds good, it sounds big and powerful, and it is, but in terms of speed, the Tremor is faster than this is, both statistically and, you know, just to my judgment as well, but. The Power Wagon has a little bit more body lean in turns and in corners and obviously on-road manners most of you aren't going to care. It's going to be totally fine and perfect for most of you on the road. It's a really comfortable driving truck actually. So um, Another similarity is that they're both really quiet. This has laminated glass just like the Tremor does. Uh, the only noise you really get is the tire noise because we have big knobby tires. When you get on a rougher, louder, normally loud type of road, the Power Wagon, this one, is quieter than the Tremor. Uh, so that's nice. They're both quiet on the interstate, except for the tire noise, but it's nice to know you can have a quiet ride in an off-road duty type of truck. 
Now the Tremor can give you adaptive cruise control, but that tester did not have it. This power wagon does have the lane keeping system and the adaptive cruise control, front and back parking sensors, so they're very similar, except this has the adaptive cruise control at this price point. And daily driving wise, the power wagon is a little smaller of a vehicle and in terms of length and a com more comfortable ride. So I would say it's probably a little bit more enjoyable, but you really feel like a boss in that Tremor with that 7.3 liter, bigger tires. But I mean, really, this is easy to live with. It's kind of got different controls, much different setup right here, especially with the bench seat. So it depends on what matters to you. I like both. So leave your comments below. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a detailed off-road comparison type of video with these on the exact same surfaces and obstacles, but a quick little summary is that with the Tremor, you could definitely feel the size of the vehicle, the size of the wheels, the, the big ground clearance that you had, an excellent approach angle with the Tremor. It was still really smooth. You have the trail control, like an off-road cruise control. I didn't get to take it over any real big bumps or big hills or rocks or anything like that, but driving the Tremor, I could tell just how capable that truck could have been, especially with that much power, that much ground clearance, and those tires definitely make a huge difference. Whereas if you look at the Power Wagon, you can, you can certainly push that thing a little bit more in certain situations. For example, the disconnecting sway bar up front can give you serious articulation with those front wheels, which I wasn't even able to completely capture that. The ground clearance is not quite as good, nor is the running clearance, but if you put bigger tires on here, I could definitely see how that could really help that out, uh, even though these tires were still excellent. Same tread as the Tremor, just a little bit smaller. The departure angle is excellent. The approach angle is still very good on this power wagon, and Overall, I was very impressed with both of these trucks. Lots of fun to drive. Maybe next time we can even go a little further and do some crazier stuff off-road. But both are still very fun. Be sure to check out each individual review if you want to see a little bit more about that. But let's go ahead and wrap things up. Now, as we wrap things up on these two trucks, if you couldn't tell, they're both suited a little bit differently to different types of people. So the Power Wagon, this is like the off-road king, especially for heavy-duty trucks. The capability that it has and the, the exact features like that front locker and even that uh, articulation that you get on the front axle, as opposed to the Tremor, which maintains the Super Duty capability with its towing and payload, which is kind of one area where the Power Wagon struggles, and the Power Wagon has more off-road tech than this does. And if you put the same size tires, a couple inch bigger tires on the Power Wagon that this Tremor has, you can go a lot of places with this. So it depends what you're looking for. You've kind of got a mix of super duty, heavy duty capability with towing and payload, but still really off-road capable or extremely off-road capable with a little bit of kind of your traditional towing and payload numbers on the power wagon. Which one would you go for? Which one do you like better? I think they both look great. They both have a lot of features and they're both honestly pretty luxurious when you look at everything that they have. They're only a couple thousand dollars apart the F-350 Lariat with the Tremor is more expensive and you can get this dressed up more expensive because one, you can get it as a 250 and a 350 and you've got a couple different trim level options you can price it out at. Whereas the Power Wagon, it's got a limited number of options even though it has a lot, but it's not like you can put the Power Wagon package on different trim levels. This is the trim level. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave your comments down below. Be sure to check out some of these other videos and subscribe for weekly reviews. Make sure you don't miss the reviews of each of these vehicles independently. Have a great rest of your day.